Uh, that's one of his favourites. Taking the game as a whole, Wimbledon certainly made a very basic football error by allowing Manchester United to score more goals than they did, because that meant that they lost the game. And as a man of your experience will know, Des, they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to do that. They didn't want to do that. Indeed, they should have ensured that they scored more goals than they let in, thereby winning the game and not losing it, because losing games in football is not something they wanted to do. Winning, yes. Losing, you don't want to do that. I'm glad to see I finally met someone of a like mind. This is secure. GD. GD. Goal digger. Jimmy Dill. Jimmy Dill. <laughs> I like that. Why don't you sing? Sing? Mm. I'm going on the front. Oh, I like I'll do it in the bit in the middle. Isn't that I'm going to put it in front of you. <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that what? Right, look at that. What an act. What an act. I've never known him lost for words in any circumstances. Even when he was ill, he talked about it to his friends openly, told you the details and all the rest of it. Fascinating because Jimmy, being Jimmy, learned all about it. In 1991, Hill developed cancer of the bowel. He made a full recovery, but in all was unwell for nearly two years. He never allowed his illness to become public, and he continued to work. It's the uncertainty of the situation and the lack of knowledge. You don't really know what's happening to you, uh, especially as I wasn't feeling ill. I mean, that was the, uh, that's probably the strange part about it. You know, most people who, when obviously given news of some kind like that, would um, be receiving it because, um, you know, they were feeling down in, in a, one way or another. I wasn't feeling down at that time. Um, just symptoms which indicated further trouble. Jimmy not only worked, he played golf, he played tennis, he did all these sporting things that he's always done while he was going through these various treatments and uh, showed, I think, the kind of courage I would love to have about a tenth of if I found myself in the same situation. I mean, I'm not very comfortable talking about it now, although I want to talk about it because I want to say to people, it isn't the end of the world if you get cancer. You know, uh, surgeons are marvelous. Um, there is help out there. So, you know, get yourself together, um, let them do their stuff, and uh, you might win a match or two. It's little known about Hill that he sometimes writes poetry. His wife, Bryony, has borne the brunt of it with remarkable courage. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I just read it. You, you were beautiful and everyone loved you. I was just talented. <laughs> Love in abundance, modest Morris. <laughs> 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 oh dear. <laughs> this is Sunis. Looks for walk. Neri's coming through from right back. And Neri! One of the most euphoric moments in Scottish football history. David Neri scores against Brazil. At half time, Hill described this goal as a toe poke, successfully irritating the entire population of Scotland. What I shall never forget is when the match was over and a couple of Scottish lads sort of walked by me. One of them had a scarf and, he, and I said, I'm sorry about the result. He said, aye, he says, tragic, tragic. Would you like my scarf? And he made a present to me of his Scottish scarf, which I accepted and said, thank you very much indeed. And then another guy, totally unconnected with him, walked up afterwards, also a member of the Scottish uh, supporters club, as it were, who went <coughs> and spat <laughs> right into my face. The reaction when I went on as Jim with the full makeup was it was actually quite quite unnerving, and I had to work very hard to get people to on my side because initially it was like that's Jimmy Hill, and we don't like Jimmy Hill because he said that about Neri, and we've never forgotten, you know. And and suddenly I was doing all this stuff, and I could feel, you know, the, the sort of uh, ill will, if you like. But as I say, I think now that's all water uh, well under the. Uh, uh, under the bridge. I think Jimmy Hill himself knows uh, the fact that 
I wouldn't go so far to say that he was dear to their hearts, but uh, it's certainly the case that uh, there was a serious antagonism, maybe in the 70s against Jimmy, but uh, that's gone away now, and it's all wrapped up in the parody of Jimmy Hill and wrapped up in the light-heartedness and the humour of the Scottish fans. David Neary will be um, one of the sort of words on my grave, I think, on my tombstone. <laughs> and someone who... Uh, the whole nation thought I was insulting. Wouldn't I was very pleased he scored. Yeah, but of course he upsets people, Jimmy. I mean, he spent his life upsetting people. Um, and, uh, but that's part of him. And a few years ago when there was a little debate here about, you know, everybody, everybody was looking at everybody's talent and all the rest of it. And I said, well, look, we've got a ton of heroes in this business. Jimmy's our villain in a way. You know, you can't have good guys without the occasional bad guy. And, uh, and Jimmy has played the sort of bad guy in, in many ways. And he is much loved, but much disliked, uh, but never ignored. If he'd allowed McManaman a freer role in the center, he'd have opened up his options for Fowler, because Fowler was in the best Jimmy, position. Jimmy, be quiet, will you? Also, Collymore could break through the Spurs' defence. You won't get it better than that <laughs> yeah, 109 times. <laughs> But one of the things that I do enjoy, as you'll realise, is having a laugh at myself. When do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> when you get home and watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Give us a blast, Jim. <laughs> Shall I blow it? I mean, you won't go. 